I'm gonna do a little introduction and then uh, we'll go into it, alright? Alright. Hey everybody, this is Frankie Slauson and uh, I just want everybody to, uh, into, I want to introduce you to my uh, next guest here on the Frankie Slauson Show channel here on YouTube. His name is Oliver Holler. And uh, if you guys remember a while ago, I was giving you a tour of my room here, and one of the pictures that uh, I, one of the pictures that I had on here was a poster made and designed by Oliver Holler, and autographed actually too. And uh, well, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it, friend. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for for those are, for people who are wondering who you are, you want to kind of give them a kind of. Uh, Tell them who you are and what it is that you do. <laughs> that's, that's the big question. Who am I and what is it that I do? Uh, well, um, uh, first and foremost, I'm a big fan, like you, of, of Back to the Future. Uh, of course. And uh, in 2001, my wife and I uh, found a, uh, a 1982 DeLorean and decided to purchase it and turn it into a time machine. Uh, thus... You know, putting us deeper and deeper into this uh, Back to the Future fandom. Oh, of course. Uh, we turned it into a time machine, and, and we uh, decided with, that we needed a, a purpose for it, some, something, you know, some way to use it. And about that same time, the, the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's uh, had developed uh, Team Fox, and we joined as, as members, as volunteers with them, and used we used the car uh, to raise funding and awareness for the foundation. And uh, how long have you been doing this for now? Well, we've had the car since 2001, and uh, I would say shortly thereafter, we actively started participating, even before Team Fox was, was developed. We were donating to the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Okay. And uh, obviously, Michael J. Fox is aware that you guys are doing this. Uh, what was his? Uh, what was the first reaction when you got, uh, when you got to hook up with the uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation to do this? Well, uh We've been very fortunate to uh, have, uh, we've, we've met uh, Michael J. Fox on a couple of occasions, and he's just extremely gracious and uh, uh, very encouraging, and uh, I, I usually tell people he's, he's everything you would really hope uh, he would be as a, you know, kind of as a, a hero of ours. Oh, yeah. Uh, very optimistic, very sharp, very, uh, very funny. I suppose it's, uh, I suppose you're pretty uh, happy like all the rest of us are that he's coming back to TV. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think that's a great thing. And I'm, I'm glad that the particular treatments and, and things that uh, he's, he's uh, working with uh, for his health are, are having a good effect. Yeah, because that's pretty much the reason why he left Spin City, because of the Parkinson's. Correct. Ah. Uh, uh, one of the things that I was pretty amazed at, and, and I'm going to talk about the, the poster that you made. What, uh, what, I, I know Back to the Future kind of inspired that, but like, what kind of just, uh, what kind of made you decide to do do the whole poster in the first place? Well, I guess it, it comes back to who I am and my particular skill sets and things like that, my interests. Um, I was uh, forced kicking and screaming into uh, taking a little after-school art class uh, when I was in elementary school. And uh, I really took to it. I really enjoyed it, and, and it really kind of flipped the switch inside me. So, and I've uh, been uh, making and uh, making art ever since. So when the 20, 25th anniversary came around for Back to the Future, I thought, well, it certainly deserves to have a kind of a commemorative poster uh, composed just, just for the uh, event. And no one else was really doing it, and so I, uh, one of my heroes is Drew Struzan. Oh yes, I know who that is. Famous uh, poster artist. Yep. Uh, uh, probably the most famous artist of our, our lifetime. Uh, I admire his his style and all, and he did the posters, of course, for Back to the Future, all three of them. So I decided to do it in his uh, style, and um, we did a limited edition of one thousand. Yes. And, uh, Stephen Clark of uh, Back to the Future dot com. Uh, agreed to uh, produce the, the limited edition, edition. He financed the printing of it, and 100% of the proceeds have gone to the the Michael J. Fox Foundation. So it's been really fantastic for the fans and for the foundation, and it was a really good uh, exercise for for me and, and uh, uh, you know painting it. Oh yeah, and 
And I, you know, I was I was pretty happy and surprised when the first time that I noticed it was like on some some other Back to the Future fans had it on, like for an image on their Facebook page, and I got to I got to wondering like, is this a, a poster that somebody could buy, you know, and actually like you know have and whatever because it looks so cool and and if you I, I don't know how familiar you are with my my stuff that I put on my Facebook page, but I try to find when it comes to photos and stuff, I try to find cool little photos that are of my favorite films and stuff that are unique that are rare and stuff like that and 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 i found this pretty unique and rare and so i he told me who you were and he sent me the link to the site and immediately i had to buy i had to buy a couple i I gave one to a friend for his birthday and framed it for him so (laughs) that's great so I, w- I was pretty uh, pretty enthused, and then after learning about the Back to the Future poster, then I got to learn a little bit more about you. Of course, this has been probably, it's been two years, of course, since uh, I think you and I have been friends on Facebook, but the fact now I'm having a chance to interview you is pretty cool, just because you, you're you talented like that. It said you uh, went to uh, University of Hawaii for art, is that right? Yep, uh, I was an art major. I, I started off at the University of North Carolina in Asheville in their uh, art program, and then I transferred over to uh, to Hilo, University of Hawaii Hilo, in their art department. And it was really just a fantastic time because I, I got to do art and, and study art and work with some incredible professors. And um, the rest of the time, I worked my way through college uh, in the theater department. So I, I got to build sets and paint scenery and make props and, and kind of... Uh, worked hand in hand with with my art uh, studies sure and w- was art something that you've always wanted to do or was there other professions that you wanted to take up uh it's pretty much the only thing i i'm able to do i'm, I'm pretty much not good for anything else okay well you're obviously <laughs> able to you're obviously able to create a, a replica of the delorean i mean maybe you should try and do like some movie like movie vehicle jobs or something <laughs> I just took on the uh, DeLorean project as as I thought of it as a big sculpture. Uh-huh. So it's, uh huh. That's that's how, how I accomplished that, and and I didn't do it alone. My wife Terry uh, was there the whole way, helping me bend the metal and get things lined up. And um, yeah, and I think that's just kind of cool, though, because I've always I've never had the chance to see a DeLorean up in real life before, and I've seen other cars like the General Lee and. And a few other well-known cars around here for parades and stuff, but I think it'd be a dream to see like somebody in Minnesota own a, a, to- or a DeLorean and then do kind of what you guys did, you know, and, and, and do like a recreation of that. <laughs> I mean, does Cleveland, Ohio, still do their uh, DeLorean show at all? Do you know? Because I think they. Oh, did... Can you repeat that, please? Uh, does Cleveland, Ohio, still do their annual DeLorean show by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at all? Or are you not aware of that? Uh, that's a good question. I don't, if it was the DeLorean car show. Because uh, I saw, I, I thought I saw some pictures of it. I thought I saw some pictures of some information about it a long time ago, saying that they do this by, uh, yearly by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm. What's that? Don't, don't know. I know that uh, there was a DeLorean car show in Cleveland, Ohio, years okay. ago. It was before we purchased our car. Okay. It's put on by uh, Ken Konsalik, who does the DeLorean car show every two years. So it's uh, Cleveland and uh, Mem- Memphis, Cincinnati, um, Pigeon Forge, Chicago, <laughs> Orlando. <laughs> Over, this, this past year was Orlando. Must be your wife in the background telling you, huh? She's uh, <laughs> uh-huh. That's all right. <laughs> So, no, uh, one of the questions that I, I didn't write down, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you live because I, when I went to go get a pop earlier, I, I thought about this question. It's like, how do you get the money to be able to travel all this, these destinations? I mean, for you guys That's financially. That's a great question. We, we use the car in, in, in two different ways. Uh, when a, a... Nope, I think we lost the connection here. Oh boy! Corporation uh, or some other business is uh, wanting to have a private. Uh, oh, we're, fi- we're we're fine. Hello? You got me. You still there? Yeah, I'm still okay. there. Uh, when a, a company to have, when a company wants to have a private party uh, that has a 
a Back to the Future theme or a, a futuristic kind of uh, uh, theme, uh, occasionally they'll call on us, and if, if we're able to do the distance and work out the logistics, uh, then, then uh, and the, the cost, if it's within their budget, then we'll do that. And that helps us maintain the car and uh, to afford to be able to do uh, fundraising events and, and travel and, and uh, get to from fun, fundraiser to fundraiser. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, Steven, uh, he has the BackToTheFuture.com site. Uh, that, that's that been running for a long time, uh, ever since uh, the Internet pretty much has you know started. Uh, I've noticed that he's done a lot of changes on it. Uh, is he ever going to do, like, uh, oh, I don't know, like, I, he, I remember a long time ago, so either him or somebody made, like, some Flash animation movies, uh, recreating Back to the Future, some of the popular scenes from the uh, series or whatever. It'd be kind of fun for him to, to do that again, if he was the one who did that, or, I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's got, uh, he's probably, uh, single-handedly carried the Back to the Future torch, uh, further and longer than any other individual, uh, even uh, Bob Gale, the creator, you know, writer, producer of the movie, uh, uh, and big, uh, big props for so much uh, for so long. Uh, he has some really big plans in the works for the website, and uh, I can't reveal uh, them right now. But uh, uh, be, be looking uh, at the, the, the website, and, and you'll you'll see some uh, pretty impressive things within the next year, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, it seems like, you know, every so often he update, updates it anyway. And, you know, like the one that I like is, I don't know, I haven't been to it in a while, but uh, the one where he does the, uh, kind of like the Back to the Future intro kind of in a way before the site loads or whatever. I like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he's always adding new merchandise and things like that. He's probably the single biggest resource for officially licensed Back to the Future merchandise. Okay. Uh, that you can find, and uh, if you're looking for something Back to the Future for a gift or for yourself, um, you can go to btf.net. That's the store part of his website, and uh, you can find some amazing things. So this is a lot of times he'll list some collectibles that are no longer available, but he has a few left, and, and uh, you can get those. Did you uh, did you ever thought about putting your poster through his website originally? I think he announced it and provided a link in a in a news segment or something. Because, like I said, he was. He, he sponsored the poster, so yeah. uh, he uh, he didn't make the announcement, uh, and uh, I think he put the link up to where you could get them. Of course, this was uh, you know a couple of years ago, yeah. And uh, we've got just a few left. I've already taken down the the on online store, and uh, because we can't take any more orders because we're that close to running out. Oh, so it's yeah. One fundraiser. Yeah, that's, that's, well, at least you can say you you got to get pretty much rid of all of them just about, you know. I mean, how many do you figure you have about left, if you could figure it out? Maybe 20, 20 or 30. It was funny, I, I came to Steve and originally and said, uh, I've, I've got this painting, and I, I showed him a picture of it. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to do a, a limited edition of maybe 500. Uh, yeah. And I, well, maybe there's there's enough fans that, you know, would appreciate my work uh, and... and, and because it was Back to the Future, they would donate, you know, maybe ten dollars. And he said, "Well, how, let's do a thousand. And I said, "Well, I don't have the money to to produce that many, and um, I, I'm going to need some help." And he was like, "Yeah, let's print a thousand. So uh, that's, that's how that came about. That's the story behind the okay. print. Well, that's pretty cool. And, and like I said, it's a it's an awesome piece, and it should be in the uh, art museum somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Nice of you to say, and I, I appreciate. Yeah, it. I mean, I'm blown away that you know we we uh, were able to uh, uh, put double the amount of what I was thinking into into people's hands. Hey, you got fans in Minnesota here, you know. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people I ran into that still remember Back to the Future and, and will never forget about. It. So hey, you know, I'm a I'm a fan no matter what. I got the Blu-ray sets, I got the soundtracks, I got the posters, I got. You know, rare T-shirts and all that. I mean, I love it. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing that it can see, still keep going after so many years of the film not being in, in production or whatever. You know. You know, uh, you mentioned the Blu-ray. Here's a small anecdote. We happened to be out in uh, Hollywood. Uh, well, it was just before the Blu-rays came out. Okay. Before they were released, and uh, we got to actually sit in on a viewing in the Universal Studios back lot uh, of the final. 
Blu-ray uh, sample oh. with, with Bob Gale, the, the creator of the, yeah. the movie. And, and uh, we, we sat there and watched the whole movie, you know, all the way through on the, in the nice private uh, projection room. And uh, after it was over, he said, you know, <laughs> the movie didn't even look this good back in uh, 1985 on the screen. Oh, uh, yeah. They had just done so much to clean it up and, and make it uh, better than it ever was. So, yeah, this generation, the people just discovering it uh, are having the benefit of seeing it uh, in an even better condition than we did. I wonder if they'll ever put it in th 3D at all. <laughs> I don't know. I would like, I'm a big proponent of that for this movie, simply because it would introduce it to yet another whole, whole slew of people. Yeah. And there are many scenes that just lend themselves to a 3D effect. Uh, doesn't doesn't much care for the idea. So I don't know if, if there's enough money in it. If Universal believes there's enough money in it, uh, box office wise, to do it, I, I have a feeling they would uh, push for it. Hey, but I think if they're, if they're, if, Bob Gale had the final, if they're final doing it for Star Wars, they might as well do it for Back to the Future. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, I want to ask you a couple other things before we, we leave. Uh, talk about your website a little bit, so where people can find you if they want to help donate and stuff and anything else you want to say about it. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, the website, again, is hosted by uh, our friend Stephen Clark at BTTF.com, but uh, our official fundraiser page is called tothefuture.org. Um, and uh, that's, that's where you can... Uh, you can donate, of course. You can read our backstory a little bit and, and understand what we do and why we do it. Uh, there are links to our Facebook page, so you can join that. And uh, that's, a, that's an easy way to get some of the more updated pictures and things uh, while we're on the go. Yeah, I uh, said you had, uh, I said you had, uh, boy, you have a lot of followers, too. Well over a 1,000 or so or more, at least? Yeah, that's that's kind of neat. Uh, I wish we had more. A lot, a lot of our followers are from uh, Argentina. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I actually uh, joined that group here the other day, I believe. I, I hit a like for it, so now you got one in Minnesota now. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Thank you. Um, but right now we're on Route 66, traveling across the country from Chicago to... Oh, okay. L.A. And uh, we're uh, uploading pictures every evening when we find a hotel. And, uh, huh. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, sharing little stories of it. And so very... Oh, okay. I think the, I think the connection's acted up again. I see you, but I don't hear you. <laughs> uh oh, not again. Testing one, two, three. I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I only got one other thing to, to say before we close this interview. Has, has anybody ever told you that you resemble, you look a lot like uh, Huey Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> I wish more people said that though, because he's a good-looking guy. He's, uh, we've had the pleasure of meeting him as well, and uh, he, I tell you what, he sounds better than he ever has too. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's. It, I mean, like, uh, I saw pictures of Huey Lewis. Obviously, I know what he looks like. And then I saw pictures of you, and it's like, geez, does he have a twin brother somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how Huey would feel about that comment, but it's it's a nice compliment. Oh yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you, you and... Uh, well, actually, I, I think one more thing that we have to mention, uh, since we are doing this interview, I did mention on my Facebook page that uh, I mentioned when I asked you about doing some type of cross-promotion, you know, to, to just uh, promote this interview a little bit. I know what I originally asked, and I know you said you couldn't do it, but then you said you had some uh, some pins or whatever that you were going to give me that I could give away. We have a few really cool things left from, again, Stephen's website, bttf.com. They're tiny little flux capacitor pins, and they, they light up, and they get little LEDs, and they blink. Um, and I'd be glad to uh, provide those to you for, uh, uh, I don't know how you want to distribute them, but um, I can give those to you. We'll figure out something. We'll do like a contest, because when this gets uploaded, I'm going to probably wait, uh, give it a little bit to see how long it'll take for, for the pins to arrive or whatever, then I'll... I'll upload this when they, when they get here. Very good. Cool. 
But other than that, I want to say thank you uh, once again to, to you, Oliver, and for taking the time. I'm, ho hopefully I wasn't too much of a bother because I, I, I tend to, I know I kind of bug people sometimes when it comes to doing interviews or whatever just because I want to I want to help my, I want to get myself out there too, just like how you guys are doing that. No, it's been a pleasure to talk with you, and, and thanks for, for asking. Yeah, all right, everybody. Go, be sure to go to this guy uh, Oliver's website, to the future dot org, and and I guess there are no really hardly any posters left, but I'm sure if you are friends with Oliver, maybe he can hook you up if there's some left. Uh, as he said, there probably woods a few. <laughs> we'll be we'll be at the Ohio Comic Con coming up, and the New Orleans Comic Con, the Wizard World New Orleans. Uh, and if we have any left, we'll have them with us. So okay. If you're in those areas, come on down and uh, see us. All right. Sounds good. Thanks again there, Oliver, and uh, take care. Thanks, Frankie.